way to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, California Jam, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, The Cairo Dex App, Dr. Alok Trevetti, Cairo Spark, Cairo Graham, Chiropractic Wealth Management, Eight Weeks to Wellness, Integrative Freedom, and Element Mattresses. Let's hustle. All right, guys, welcome to episode 32 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I'm your co host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester, to tell you about today's guest. Well, today we have the honor of interviewing uh, Leslie Hewitt, who is an amazing chiropractor out in California. And if you want to understand more about chiropractic politics and her branding, Ancient Spirit Technology, stay tuned for this episode. Tell us a little bit about your chiropractic story. Well, my chiropractic story, when I was 16 years old, on Halloween night, I was going to a party. Apparently, I have amnesia from it, so I'm only telling you what I've heard. I was running for a bus, and I got hit by a truck. Oh. Literally got seriously hit by a truck. Ended up in a coma, ended up in the hospital, awoke, um, had, had no clue where I was or what had happened. I couldn't turn my neck from that point forward, and it was just like there was some spiritual stuff that, you know, I had an out-of-body experience, um, which back then I didn't know what that was. The hospital told me it was a neurological event. Anyways, two years later, I go get my first neck adjustment, and I swear to God, it was instant, innate intelligence. I knew with my first neck adjustment that this was the answer for my life. So I was under regular chiropractic care from the age of 18. I was in corporate America. I used to get adjusted every week. And while I was, a get, while I was getting adjusted every week, and oh, by the way, I used to go to Hardick Chiropractic in London, Ontario, Canada. And Cliff Hardick is one of the speakers on the Cal Jam stage this year as well. So it's weird how these synchronicities keep coming back around. You know, I haven't seen Cliff Hardick for many, many years. And here we are on the Cal Jam stage together this year. But just to jump to where I am right now, um, I left corporate America and said, I have to be a chiropractor. There's no way that I should be doing anything else in life. And so I, I really think that that accident was divine intervention. So what would you say makes you unique in the chiropractic world? Well, I'm a leader by, by nature. And I mean, like I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a true born leader. Um, I have a story when I was two years old, it's sort of our family story. At the age of two, I was already a leader. I was going out into the neighborhood and trying to recruit other little children to be superheroes. I was getting them to wear capes. Um, so at a very young age, there was some leadership qualities showing up in me. At the age of four, um, you know, I started demonstrating some leadership traits and then throughout my life every every group I joined every association I participated in I just naturally wanted to hang out with the cream of the crop and leadership and so here I am many many years later I'm the president of the California Chiropractic Association and it's the sixth leading economy on the planet we're the only state that can you know, line up to the other economies. And the other economies are countries, the United States, China, Japan, UK, and um, Germany. So California is a significant state for the California Chiropractic Association to really lead our chiropractic agenda. And so I would say what really makes me unique in chiropractic is I bring leadership to our profession and to our tribe and our community. And the next thing that I'm gonna be bringing, which I'll be sharing on the CalJAM stage, is the talking points that us chiropractors need to, to do. We really need to switch our narrative. 
when we're going to enter into politics. And I really think that's our next step. And so that's what makes me unique is I'm, I'm bringing that new narrative to chiropractic. The other piece is, of course, I'm a woman and, you know, I've been in chiropractic for, well, since I was 18 and I've never really seen the feminine divine in this profession. And um, I'm really excited to see so many women step up in leadership. And I just want to acknowledge you, Jim, for really seeking out rock star women in our profession. So thank you for helping us women to change the narrative for chiropractic. Well, I appreciate you saying that too, but I I just know that that's where the puck is going. And I know that the leadership role of the woman is going to be an integral part of the future of chiropractic. So I just know that if we just keep on shining a spotlight or a beacon, as you will, as uh, BJ Palmer would say, um, we're just going to shine a beacon of light on a woman's voice and uh, let you guys just... uh, you know, grow into where you're supposed to be, and that's in leadership roles in this profession. And I think it's uh, it's really smart marketing on our end by building alliances with the future leaders in the profession. And thank you for quoting the great Gretzky, right? <laughs> right? Talk about leadership in NHL, right? He always, you know, if you ever ask Gretzky what makes you such a good hockey player, he didn't say it. He, he always said, I'm not a good hockey player. I always go to where the puck is going. So thank you for quoting the great Gradsky. <laughs> well, you know, I just think that, you know, when you can tie a story together, that's really the substance of the what, what gets people going. And uh, I always tell people it's not the person in the room that has the Rolex on or that drives the expensive car or you know you know, has tons of money in the bank. I always say the most valuable person in the room is the one with the best story. I agree. That's awesome. That, that's, that's words of wisdom for all of us right there. So thank you. So do you have any mantras or quotes that stick out in your mind that help you with your momentum as a chiropractor? It's a done deal, baby. It's a done deal. So that's, that's my quote um, that always comes in my brain. Whenever I have a thought, I always go, it's a done deal. The fact that I had the thought means it's done. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that will have ideas, thoughts, intentions, goals, and then they, they sh- you know, it's expansion, and then they shrink. It's like, oh, I'm not worthy, you know, I can't do it. I am a firm believer that if you even had the thought, it's a done deal. It's already living in you, and that's innate intelligence right there. And so innate intelligence is, for me, it's a done deal. If it's in my body, it's done. All I need to do is leverage it by expressing fully and allowing uh, universal intelligence to to make it so. So it's a done deal. Well, one of the things I was chomping at the bit to ask you before we transitioned into that question was, I know you you did a lot of work with the chiropractors in California at that leadership role. What are a couple of takeaways that you learned being in that group? Well, I, I, I can tell you in a nutshell. We need, to, we need to change the narrative if we're going to really get chiropractic on the map. And, you know, chiropractors in healthcare and in politics, we're, we're not really being put down by the medical people. And it's so funny that us chiropractors think we're fighting the medical people. We're actually not fighting them. They're, they're busy fighting their, their own battles. So here's where the narrative needs to change. I mean, we can talk the tick. We can talk about innate intelligence, universal intelligence, and subluxation. That's our proprietary gift. That's who we are as chiropractors. We own that, and we must really support that. I, I say that all of that is the Ark of the Covenant for us. That, the, that language is our chiropractic, chiropractic gospel. Those are our gospel words. But you know what? Our politicians don't know what those words mean. So here's where we need to just change the narrative. We need to start talking to our politicians and legislators about uh, cost effectiveness. That, That speaks their language. And what we all know in chiropractic is chiropractic's cost effective. I mean, if you've got a patient that comes into us with with low back pain, it's more cost effective to come and see us than to go get surgery. So that's number one talking point. Number two, we're safe. When you come in for chiropractic care, 
we're non-invasive and it's a safe approach to all things. The other narrative and talking points are we're non-drug. We are in an opioid epidemic in the United States like we have never seen before. And for all of you listeners that are um, into conspiracies like I am, we know that big pharma has really taken over the medical world. And what I like to say is not only have they done that, they've taken over our opiate receptor. I mean, as chiropractors, we know the power of the parasympathetic and we are a receptor driven being. They've literally taken over our American citizens biologically. So we need to start educating our legislators that there is an opioid epidemic, that chiropractic is the solution. We're cost effective, safe, we're conservative care, we stimulate the central nervous system, we keep people healthy, we keep children healthy, and what we do as chiropractors is we can actually increase access for many, many patients to come and see us for wellness care as opposed to relying on these drugs. And a lot of these people that are relying on their insurance for health care, I always say to them, if you're relying on your insurance for health care, you better get a, a good life insurance plan, man. Because, you know, if you're going to be relying on insurance, they're, they're naturally going to just get you onto drugs. I mean, that's the model. So that's the new narrative. And as chiropractors, what I'll be bringing to you know, interviews like this and to the Cal Jam stage and any other stage out there is our Ark of the Covenant language is our proprietary gift. That's who we are as a profession and we own those words, but we've got to change the narrative because our legislators don't have the education that we have. We've got to switch some of the words so that we can get them on board with us. And once we get our legislators on board with us, especially here in California, because we are the sixth leading economy on the planet, we can actually start infiltrating politics. And what I'm hoping to happen, getting on the CalJAM stage, because a lot of those people in the audience are coming from other states and other countries, I really think as chiropractors, we need to start infiltrating at our state level, our state associations, we need to talk to our legislators with this new narrative because I'm telling you, they are looking for us. They're, they're in search of a solution to drugs. So I want to play the rewind game with us a little bit. And why do you think that it became an issue that chiropractic started to have the troubles of, you know, the, the actual voice of chiropractic being diminished over the past 30 years or so? Well, there's, there's, you know, it comes down to, it comes down to one thing and that's money. You know, it's, it's a turf war out there and you've got big pharma that, you know, they've got very scripted programs and we can see them playing out with drugs and vaccines and the flu shot. And now we've got the shingle shot, uh, the pneumonia shot. I mean, it's crazy. Um, how many of our citizens are buying into this drug model and and that's that's the bottom line it, it really comes down to money and turf and what we need to do as chiropractors is we need to really carve out what our turf is here and we have an incredible opportunity and what we're all saying in my inner circle of uh, political leaders and chiropractic leaders we're saying like this literally is a problem handed to us on a silver platter as chiropractors. If we can't get in there and let them know that we're the solution to this drug problem, then you know we're in big trouble and we've got to get our language right. Like I said, it really comes down to our narrative. We've got to get our narrative right so we can speak their language. So tell us what's possible in the future with everything you're doing and accomplishing. Like what would, how would everything be different if more people knew about your cause and everything that you have going on? Well, uh, number one, politicians would start supporting us. They would start authoring bills. We've already got an opioid resolution at the Capitol here in California and we got a lot of legislators that, that signed it. And the opioid resolution is really just saying to the legislators, 
we've got a problem and we have the solution. As chiropractors, we are the solution. We're cost-effective, safe, conservative care, and we can get these people off drugs. And as chiropractors, we walk the talk. The other thing is we've got a, another problem that I've been shouting for 10 years and people are finally starting to listen to me is over 50% of our college grads are women and they're coming out into a marketplace with very masculine patriarch business models and practice models and language and the women are saying, I just cannot align with this chiropractic language that's happening. So thanks to you and other people, you're giving women like me an opportunity to share some of the issues that we have as women that we've been talking about behind closed doors for many, many years because we've been afraid to come out and say, you know, there's some issues out here, guys. We love you. We love what you've done for the profession, but this isn't the 1950s. This isn't the 1800s. You know, <laughs> women have changed. Our family <laughs> demographics have changed, right? Um, so there's an opportunity to, to really like open up our chiropractic family so that it's inclusive of women and not only women, but you know, we're perceived as like a white boys club. So we've got to really open it up to culture and color. And the other thing is there's a lot of mommy and me groups out there that want to get involved in our legislation. And, and when they get into our little groups, we're so clicky and niche and we speak this very unique tribal language that are our chiropractic gospels. They love it, but they feel that they don't quite totally understand us. So there's some opportunities for us to make some changes where we can get more people into the tribe and into the community with us, where we can actually leverage. And what I've discovered in politics is more people is powerful because when legislators see that, you know, all legislators care about is getting reelected. And if we come to them in numbers and say, look at all the people that are going to vote for you, that speaks volumes politically. So that's what I'm bringing to chiropractic is I have figured out some of the key things that we need to do that will literally be a, a game changer for us in chiropractic on the planet. Well, I, I, I feel so impressed by what you say. And uh, I thank you for being such a warrior when it came to understanding politics, because a lot of times people, they just want to practice, they want to keep their head down, they want to stay safe, and nobody wants to become that moving target that becomes political. And I think that that's a, a huge uh, pair of shoes to stand in and to walk upon. And I, I and just... they're high heels, by the way, Jim. They're high heels. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and just to shift some of your language, if I could be so bold, I'm not a warrior, I'm a priestess. Okay, well, perfect. You're a priestess. Yeah. And I'm you're... a priestess wearing heels, baby. <laughs> well, you're delivering the goods, that's for sure. And Thank you. The, the next part of the interview transitions into vision. Um, where do you see the profession going in five years? Um, in five years... Do you, do you have my points there? I sure do. Yep, yep. Wait, what did I say? Like, uh, just repeat it and then I'll expand on them. We must position ourselves as the answer to the biggest drug problem on the planet in the U.S. Um, so that's your first talking point. Okay, so let's let's start with that. And I already spoke. You touched on that a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So in five years, if we can switch the narrative... If we can really get on board with our talking points, and I'm, I'm not saying let's get rid of our chiropractic gospel because I stand strong on our chiropractic gospel. And I, I always say that our language, subluxation, innate intelligence, and universal intelligence, that is the Ark of the Covenant. That is our proprietary gift, and that's who we are. I, that's who we are, but that's not the language. So in the next five years, we need to get really clear about our talking points when we talk to legislators, politicians, the medical community, 
And yes, we do need to talk to insurance and some of those other entities out there because what that shows to the politicians is that we know how to play their game. And, it, and it, that's what it is. It's really a money and a turf war. So we've got to switch the narrative. And if we can get really clear about our talking points and speak the language they understand, then that is going to be the biggest game changer in the next five years for healthcare. And we've got Trump in there right now. Um, I can tell you in California, this is an election year. Uh, governor Brown's term is done. So we've got a new governor coming in here in California and uh, we have a prediction on who it's going to be. And the person that's going to be the governor here in California, and I'll just throw this out. It's not for sure. It's just, you know, my prediction. I think it's going to be Gavin Newsom and he's in Sacramento and he is such a strong politician. He has the potential to be the future president of the United States. So we have five years where we can really position ourselves in California to be the biggest game changer in healthcare in the United States. That's pretty awesome. And that, that touches right into your 10 year uh, response. And uh, the 20 year response is um, our philosophy will be mainstream with women in practice and new paradigms, models, and priestess mindsets. Yeah, see, priestess, not warrior. So, um, so yes, if we can really, I'm, I'm a systems girl, and I really do, do believe in leveraging universal intelligence. And the way I leverage universal intelligence is this key word that I always use, and it's sequence. And I loved your questioning five-year, 10-year, and 20-year um, outlook and vision is because I'm in, as a leader, I'm in the process of sequencing this for our profession. And if, if I can sequence this the way that I see this going, in 20 years, we will be the language of healthcare. People will be coming to us. I know if you haven't looked at the Palmer West Gallup poll, they spent $2 million and went with the biggest company that does surveys, and that's Gallup. I would recommend that everybody go to their website and take a look at that Palmer West Gallup poll. What they did is they went out into the public and said, what is your perception of chiropractic? And there's some key information there. Whether you want to believe it or not, take a look at the perceptions. We have such an incredible opportunity and in 20 years, I think that if we can get more women in practice serving the mothers who are making the majority of healthcare decisions, and I always like to remind women, they're the biggest consumers and they're making really poor choices. You know, they're choosing vaccines, they're choosing uh, Monsanto foods, they're feeding their kids pasta and gluten and processed foods and diet sodas. We've got to educate the moms, and what a better way to do it but the women coming out of chiropractic. A lot of the women coming out of chiropractic have an opportunity to get into mommy and me groups and really start changing the narrative for these moms that are making the majority of the healthcare decisions. And I always like to say to women too, like what is the number one thing that drives you men? It's us women. We have so much power, right? I mean, you guys, you guys do everything for us. And that's why I love you guys. You know, as a priestess, I need knights and kings and princes and priests. Like, you guys are amazing. But what drives you in your brain, number one? First of all, you've got testosterone that is just driving every decision that you make. And what drives that? Us women. So we've got to just really take our power as women, get into this profession in a really bold way, acknowledging who you men are and what you do, and also expanding the profession and consider the women, they're like your secret agents. They're like Nikita, you know, they're the women that can get into these women's groups and these mommy and me meetups and really start educating these women to make better decisions, which, oh, by the way, 
is the next political agenda that I'm going to be bringing is informed consent. And what that means is we've got to get our patients to be informed and we've got to get our patients to really take the power that they are consenting to every decision that they make for themselves, their families, and their kids. And that really comes down to education. So that in 20 years, I think the public's gonna be more informed. They're gonna make better decisions so that they consent to the type of care that they want. And I think with the right narrative, they're gonna understand who we are as a profession and why we're so important in healthcare. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, California Jam, Move Well University, The Black Diamond Club, Pure Cairo Notes, The Cairo Dex App, Dr. Alok Trevetti, Cairo Spark, Cairo Graham, Chiropractic Wealth Management, Eight Weeks to Wellness, Integrative Freedom, and Element Mattresses. Let's hustle. Well, a couple of things you said in there uh, just make me want to say thank you for trusting us. Thank you for trusting us uh, to be able to interview you to get this information out to the people that need it. And I think that if we're, like you said, um, we have to change the narrative, but we also have to be more consistent than anyone else in the marketplace. Yeah, because you know what, like you said, there's a target on us. I mean, it's pretty obvious if you're a conspiracy theorist like I am. I mean, and it's coming at us in all ways. I mean, we've got chemtrails, we've got vaccines, now we've got an opioid epidemic. They're putting antibiotics in our food. There's just like, you know, it's it's like walking through a field, like a minefield, and we've got to be the leaders. I really think chiropractors are the only profession that really know the truth. And we've got to position ourselves as the leaders in healthcare so that we can help our patients navigate through this minefield of misinformation and just garbage. They're just getting so much garbage. And once they are on board with us, then we can, then we can switch the narrative again and really remind them that we're not just bone crackers. We are stimulating, and this is my brand, ancient spirit technology. You know, it's ancient because it's universal. It's universal intelligence. It's ancient spirit technology. And the technology is innate intelligence. I mean, at a cellular level, there is so much intelligence and, you know, that stimulates brain function, immune, um, expression, sleep cycles, hormone regulation. I mean, the list goes on, as you know. But once we get everybody on board with us, we can switch the narrative and start bringing in our chiropractic gospel. So touching back on positioning yourself, how do you do that? Like, what are your key marketing strategies that you couldn't do without? Well, number one for me is, you know, walking in the truth, walk the talk, be as congruent as you can possibly be. I love to meditate every single day and really tap into my innate intelligence. And like I said, it's a done deal. I know if I tap into my innate intelligence, it automatically springboards me into universal intelligence. And then I can really leverage the universe, universal knowledge. And again, there's ancient spirit technology. And then the best marketing for me is as you know or may not know, I launched the Wow Talks in 2012, and it was really just out of my own frustration in my practice, seeing that women were misinformed and not making good decisions. So it was my way to infiltrate all the other women's groups out there. But also my frustration being in the chiropractic tribe that I love so much, I was having a really difficult time. I was burning out in the masculine language and model. So I started going out to all these women's groups, started creating my own conferences, my own chapters. I became a woman speaker on many of the stages out there for all the other women's groups. And what I discovered was 
collaboration was the key. And what I say to a lot of people is collaboration feels awkward at first because it feels like you're giving away the farm. But once you start collaborating with people, what happens, and and I know you're figuring this out too with, with what you're doing, the more people you talk to, the more people you connect with, they start promoting you and mentioning you. And then all of a sudden your name starts raising up in the culture as one of the leaders because you are the collaborator. So collaborators are leaders. And what I am suggesting with this model of marketing is if we can get away from competing with each other and this infighting that is prevalent in chiropractic, it drives me crazy, and really start collaborating, even if you don't agree And I can tell you, being the president of the California Chiropractic Association, we have so many different philosophies and belief systems. And what I have realized is whether you're, you know, way over here on the left or way over there in the right, or you've got some different philosophy, we've got to start uniting together and collaborating despite our differences. Because... That's that's one of the great things about our culture as chiropractors. We're entrepreneurs. You're never going to get all of these entrepreneurs agreeing on everything. So in a nutshell, it's collaboration. And something you touched on there again, and it comes back to the, the first step of trust. And when you start collaborating with someone, you have to trust that they're going to appreciate your ideas and not defame your ideas. You have to trust that they're going to celebrate your collaboration and not abuse that relationship. And I think that um, I was just talking to another leader, uh, Cindy Elwart Shaft Toll, on a Facebook Live today, and I, I said to her, uh, a lot of that old, old dogma of people not getting along, that's yesterday. I think that more and more, more tribes are coming together and more people are appreciating each other ever more. And the things that we're doing with you and the things that you're doing with others, um, those are old dialogues. Those are old conversations. And I think that we're moving so quickly right now with unity in the profession that in five years, I don't think we're even going to remember how disconnected people were with their egos. Yes, and thank you. You know what? Trust is key. There's there's a book out there called The Speed of Trust, and a lot of people ask me, well, what's that book about? I go, you know what? You don't even need to read the book. The title says it right there, The Speed of Trust, and that's just exactly what you said. It's, it's going to move us forward in such a fast way when we trust each other. So we're going to transition uh, a little bit into it. Are we on number seven here, Luke? Yes, we are. So number seven question for us on the interview today on the Cairo Hustle podcast is, uh, what's your favorite app or technology to keep you engaged with your audience? Um, You know what? There's so many apps and technology out there. I think that whatever anybody is using, if you're using it well, you're going to just naturally um, come to the top with your SEO. Again, it's, For me, it's collaboration. I love face-to-face. I love hanging out with people. I love connecting. And I would say that's my favorite technology is the human condition, just really connecting with like-minded people and just, you know, getting deep quickly. And your short answer was build your list. Well, there, there you go. And that's the SEO piece too. Um, when you're doing anything, build your list. When you're going out to speak, have a sign-up sheet. It doesn't need to be advanced technology. If you're a speaker, ask for a speaker table. Have a sign-in sheet. Get people to come and support you at your speaker table. Collect people's names. Get them into your list so that you can continue communication with them. And one of the great things about having a list, and I know this from having conferences myself, is it's nice to have a speaker with a huge list because there's where collaboration can really max out. It's if you've got a bunch of people with a lot of big lists and you all come together and you don't need to give away your list because nobody wants to be, um, 
targeted by a bunch of people that are coming after you for your list, but it gives you a way to communicate with your tribe. And then if you are a speaker, you get to share with your tribe, hey, I'm speaking with Cairo Hustle or Cal Jam or you know, Cairo Sushi or the California Chiropractic Association, Parker Seminars. I mean, wherever you're speaking, it's gonna, it's actually gonna invite your tribe to come and see you speak. And it's actually gonna support who we are as chiropractors as well, because my list is in the thousands. And as a matter of fact, there's 2.5 million women here in the Bay Area, and they all know me. So that's an incredible opportunity to get non-chiropractic women to CalJam, for example. So use your list to raise not only yourself up, but the communities that you serve. That's awesome. I love to hear that. So what kind of things do you like to read or listen to? Are you in the middle of any uh, good books right now? Oh, um, I, I always have a stack of books on the go. <laughs> I, I think we all do, right? You start one book and then another good book. It's kind of like Squirrel, Squirrel. I think I should name a book Squirrel. Because, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I come into this whole like paradigm where I'll get like three or four chapters into it and I'm just like, please don't tell me to read another book, somebody. Please don't tell me to read another book. <laughs> well, and so because of this, do you know what I'm doing? I'm writing books that are not that long. And so, for example, I wrote a book called Little Miss Serotonin and I'm in the, book, I'm in the process of writing another book called Little Miss Cerebellum. And they're little books for children, but adults will appreciate them because they're leadership books that are coded with our language so that we can start infiltrating the little leaders that are out there. And that's what I call these books. They're called um, they're called uh, Raising a Leader with Innate Intelligence. That's sort of the, the theme of my little children's books. And I'm in the process of writing books for adults too. And I don't want my books to be longer than 40 pages because I want people to be able to read my book in a night in two hours and go, yes, I just finished a book. It doesn't need to go in that pile over there of unfinished books. I feel that. I, I can definitely appreciate that. And I look forward to reading them. Um, I'll even read your kids' books. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'll, I'll send you one. So you'll have to send me your address and I'll send you one in the mail. Um, but the kind of books that I'm reading, to, to really be honest with you, I mean, I always love inspiration and motivation and all that stuff, but I'm really moving towards entrepreneurial books. One of the books that I would recommend is The Startup Playbook by David Kidder. He's a really good friend of mine, and what he did is he interviewed all the best startups in dot-com, you know, all the Silicon Valley all those different companies and it's a really easy read the startup playbook and what it does is it shares with you the the top five traits of a new startup and so what I've done is I've used that book as my model to restructure the California Chiropractic Association I love so it. yeah so we're in a big huge restructure and I'm treating the California Chiropractic Association like a startup, like That's, a brand new paradigm shift for chiropractic. Well, it's so fitting for being in California. <laughs> you know, absolutely. The, st and, the startup mentality is in your neighborhood. Absolutely. And, and I love startups. Like I love that. I, I love uh, that entrepreneurial mindset. So I tend to gravitate towards entrepreneurs and new ideas. So that's, that's, that's what I gravitate. So, but that's the one book that I would recommend in my stack of books here that are unfinished. Well, you do know that Luke and I are uh, entrepreneur spirits within this whole chiropractic game, and the Cairo Hustle movement's getting tons of attention and momentum, especially with bringing on so many amazing chiropractic women. Because, like you said, you guys are the influencers, and once we start making inroads with the chiropractic women, uh, it's just going to be a matter of time before we are just a major spot on the radar. Well, you're definitely entrepreneurial, and I'll share with you. Over the Christmas holidays, I bought my CCA staff in Sacramento 
a gift. And one of the gifts that I got them is this neon sign that says hustle. So <laughs> uh, I'm all about Cairo hustle. So I really appreciate the entrepreneur in you and what you're doing for the chiropractic profession with your interviews. I mean, you guys are rocking it as, in, as entrepreneurs. Well, thank you for saying that too. Um, so we're coming on the end of the interview with you today. Is there anything that we didn't ask you that you'd like to talk about? Uh, no, I would, I would just say, you know, raise your leadership, you know, whoever's listening in your own communities, in your family, if you're in the chiropractic tribe, I'm calling this era in chiropractic a leadership race. And it is a race to the top right now. And the reason I say that is because I'll, I'll be really frank with you. We're having difficulty getting millennials to get on board. They're not joiners. Um, they have a different culture cultural currency, they work differently, they have different mindsets, and we really want the millennials to get really engaged in chiropractic with their unique style of entrepreneurialism. We need new technology, we need technology experts, we need young millennials and women to really plug in. And a lot of you know, I've been collecting data. A lot of those two populations in particular, millennials and women, are disengaged with chiropractic because I'm telling you, the perception out there is that this is an old boys club and it's not, but there's still language in our culture, like I said, that needs to switch the narrative if they're going to come on board. So let's just all be mindful to make sure that our language is inclusive so that the millennials engage and the women engage. And, and that would be sort of my, my final words. If we're gonna raise leaders, we've really gotta open up the space for them to feel safe to join. So before we uh, hop off the line here, what are some uh, website links or social media links where people can follow you and find out more about your cause and what you're doing? Awesome, thank you. Well, I'm big on Facebook. So you can look for Leslie Hewitt on Facebook. Leslie Hewitt, I've got Leslie Hewitt and Dr. Leslie Hewitt. One of them is more active than the other, so make sure you get on the right one. Um, then there's drleslihewitt.com is a website. The Wow Talks.com and it's the Wow Talks.com. If you want to check out my practice model, I'm anatomypower.com. And again, you know, anatomy power, I, I named my practice that just to really remind my community where the power is. And it was sort of my narrative on innate intelligence so they can understand anatomy power. So Facebook, anatomy power, the wow talks, Dr. Leslie Hewitt. I am on Instagram. Twitter, you know, I'm everywhere. So you just type in my name, you can Google my name, and you'll see 20 pages of places that I hang out in. Um, the California Chiropractic Association website's down, otherwise I'd tell you to, to go look there. And it's down because of our new restructure and paradigm shift. I'm changing the look and feel and logo and making sure that the Chiropractic Association is really going to be role modeling and expressing this new paradigm shift. Well, I love that you're treating it like a startup and I love that you have uh, all the intent behind the words that you use. And I love that you have such a leadership position within the chiropractic paradigm. Uh, I just feel really grateful that we had a chance to share the interview time with you today. And I think that what we're going to be able to do to accomplish together as a, a team and a tribe moving forward is going to, we're going to push back all that dogma of the confusion that existed yesterday. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for supporting me in this narrative shift. I really appreciate you and um, call me for anything like seriously if you need anything just reach out to me i'm highly collaborative and if i've got the time to help and support you you just let me know how and i'll make it happen 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much for the interview today on Cairo Hustle. Awesome. Thank you. Love you guys. You right. too. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.